Hey everybody, you know, I'm not breaking any new ground by asserting that there are just some fantastic solo games or solitaire variants of multiplayer games out there. But Boy, are there some fantastic solitaire games. You know, I just, it, I don't know if I've said it on the channel yet. I know other people do, but there are some great ones. So, for example, Coffee Roaster. Really phenomenal game for just one player. It's that nice, juicy hour strategy game. Another one, Under Falling Skies, that also has kind of a, a legacy or a campaign aspect to it. Another one that I thoroughly enjoy as a solo game because of the theme, Final Girl. And the one that I want to talk about today, the one that's really captured me, it's a, a newer game, but it's legacy and built into the name, is Legacy of You. This is just for one player, takes about an hour to play every game, and the goal is to win seven games. Now, you can lose a game as well, and your loss and or your win will play into and influence your next game. So when you start this game, you are going to learn the basics of what that game does by adding story cards into your decks according to what the book tells you to do, which there's a really lovely story book that you should not open unless it tells you to. And you will develop your story and develop your possible actions and villagers and barbarians that will join this game. And your game will last. You'll have an outcome, win or lose. Next game, you're going to have that impact and impact and impact until hopefully you win a total of seven games. So you will play Legacy of You up to 13 times, either winning seven total or losing seven total. And the game is so easy to pick up. I think it's just incredibly streamlined with its iconography, card design, and simple board. And then the box insert is clear with everything written underneath it. So it's super easy to know. This is where these cards go. This is where these cards go. This is where these bits go. And you have everything and you don't even have to take it out of the box. You simply lay out the player board, which shows this impending flood. And you have cards on the top that are part of the villagers and part of the barbarians. And then you've got um, your kind of play area at the bottom, which has your draw pile, your discard pile, and then whatever you play with, like all your bits and if you have like, you know, resources and things. That's it. There's a lovely storybook that you just keep to the side until it tells you to look at it because it's got that little turtle, the gold turtle with a number in it. And the, the round structure is so simple. It's a puzzle. It reminds me of Hadrian's Wall. Now, why did I not mention Hadrian's Wall in the beginning when I mentioned all these solo games? Well, while it is easily played solo and it is a full-on solitaire game side by side with other players, it also can be played with more people. <laughs> and so I didn't mention it, but it does give me a super strong Hadrian's Wall feel where you have these resources, you have these workers, and you are placing them here to get this thing, and then that thing gets you this thing, and then paired with that thing gets you this thing, and moves this thing over, and grabs that person from there, and fights off that barbarian over there. And it's just this lovely tumbling, uh, this, this domino effect of choices that build your engine, and really map out the timing of when you do things because that's really, really important here. There are three ways that you can end the game with loss. The first way is due to the flood. So if your flood moves onto an unbuilt section of the canal or off the right side of the board, that's it. That's one way to lose the game. Another way is because of the barbarians. If there are over seven barbarians along the top of the board, Gone, you're done, donezo. <laughs> and then the last way is due to damage. If you need to destroy a townsfolk card, but don't have any left to destroy, you are going to lose the game. You win the game if you successfully build all six canal sections and survive to the end of the current round. 
And that is so hard to do. It is so hard to do. I will say that this is a challenging game and I love it. I love the puzzle. I love the challenge. And I love that there are so many choices and ways to do pretty much everything. So I just want to walk through a round to talk through the major you know, components and mechanics, but, but honestly, this is just a resource management and a worker allocation game because a lot of your uh, villagers that you have will give you resources and or workers, and then you use those workers to invest in building buildings um, or to collect more villagers with food. And you also need to fight off the barbarians and build the canal. So there are so many things up in the air. You're juggling so many balls in this and you have to keep everything in the air just as long, like ugh, the perfect amount of time because if you catch something too soon, I'm gonna just stick with this metaphor, <laughs> it may not be the right time for you to throw it back up again, so to speak. So the first phase is harvest and harvest just means get all your stuff. And the more you build buildings and reveal things that give you harvest bonuses, that's great. And you can also tuck villagers under spaces at the bottom of your board to gain more harvest boon or abilities or, or people and resources and workers and stuff. So harvest just gets you things and that's really generating all of your resources every single round and getting the most during harvest is optimal. The next stage is kind of like the whole game really. It's like the biggest part of the round is taking actions. And taking actions allows you to do actions in whatever order you want. You can activate anything and do anything and play villagers for stuff and build the canal or fight a barbarian or grab a villager and add them to your community, your, your built deck. Because the cards that are yours or available to you are at the bottom of the board. The ones at the top of the board are potential. They are not part of your deck and your deck is important because if you can't as it says, destroy one of those townsfolk card when it asks you to, that's one of the ways you lose is by not having enough townsfolk in your deck. And so you just wanna beef that deck up so much. So these actions are just all over the board, getting you again, more resources, building buildings onto empty square spaces. And when you place a building onto that space, it's going to give you something which is really good. Again, you want as many things as possible but you're also building an engine. And that engine needs to get stronger and stronger and stronger every round. If you made progress on the canal, you will have taken the little boat, the barge, and put it onto the backside of the rule sheet, which gives you the process or the progress of the round. You'll put it back and you'll put it onto the leftmost card on the canal. And at that point, you suffer attacks. And those are gonna be attacks from the barbarians. Every single revealed barbarian card at the top of your board is going to attack. And they're going to attack you and you have a choice generally. Do you lose a town folk? Did they attack one of your town folk cards and essentially send them up to the, dis the forever discard pile? Or are you going to pay what's on the other side of the slash to push back that attack? Um, which might be a fighter, which is a worker, it might be a resource or a couple of resources, but it's your choice and that's part of your actions is to save any resources necessary to fight off the barbarian so that you're not losing your townsfolk cards. So there's some really, really delicious choices in play during that actions turn that will affect or come into play or come to fruition during that um, fighting off the barbarians or, or you know fighting and doing the attack phase. After the barbarians attack, you will look at how many symbols are showing in your canal and you will add that many barbarians by sliding down the existing ones and then filling in the necessary amount of barbarians and any remaining spaces on the left of the top of the board are filled in with citizens or townsfolk from the draw pile. And you really don't wanna let those barbarians get too much because if you have seven up there, if you, repl you replenish at the end of a round, how many barbarian symbols you see, if you have seven, game over. That's it, you lose the game. So not having enough townsfolk deck is the one way. The other way is having seven up there. The third way is if your flood catches up with your barge and your barge doesn't get out of the way by clearing all of those cards in that central area of the main board. 
Now, when you run out of your own townsfolk cards and you have your own discard pile, whenever you exhaust cards, you just place them in your own discard pile. You don't discard them forever. There is an opportunity to do that. But let's just say we have all our cards there and you have no more cards and you have to shuffle them. Well, you just pick up your discard pile, shuffle your deck and place it back down. But you have to move the flood forward or right one space on the track. And that's that third ways. If that flood catches up to your barge, done, game over. So you are juggling so much stuff and that's a round. Once you're done with the round, go back to harvest. Harvest is the best. Everyone loves it because you're like stuff, 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 stuff. I love stuff. And along the way, you are fighting barbarians that give you stories. You're adding these um, uh, uh, townsfolk and they might give you stories. Clearing the canal might give you stories. So many wonderful things where you open up the book and then you add cards. So you will just develop your deck and you will just keep going and you will play until you've won seven games. This legacy is replayable. It doesn't damage your box. It doesn't damage any of the components. It's so clean and it's tough. I love it. I think it's super, super cool and is kind of my new hot favorite solo only game. So check out Legacy of You if you can. What a wonderful game to play when you just want to sit down and have a super cool puzzle for yourself with all this resource management, worker allocation, and puzzling. That's my kind of game, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something just totally scratches that itch. All right, everybody, I'll see you next time. Bye.